Hi everyone, good afternoon. Um, myself, Nivin. I'm from Pandaki Learning. So today I'll be uh, taking this webinar session on the Internet of Things. So I work in Embedded Systems Department here. I'm a software, uh, Embedded Software Programmer. So as a, so we can uh, see Embedded from a different point of view. So I'm uh, as I'm an Embedded Engineer, so I'll be explaining from a perspective of a uh, embedded system perspective so in in end of things can be implemented in uh, so many different ways so it basically just means any device that is any uh, object that is connected to internet and it has a capability to do certain things certain capability to execute certain task with without any human intervention so that is a, a basic idea of Internet of Things. That so that can be the object can be anything. It doesn't have to be a hard, hard you know, uh, a physical object. It can be uh, anything. It can be a software or a so software running on a system or a mobile phone or a standalone software. Some running in some uh, hardware or it could be a hardware based uh, system with the simple microcontroller setup like with the M simple embedded system setup or it could be uh, say SBCs like single board computers or SOCs uh, so we, we can implement embedded uh, internet of things in so many different ways so we'll be mostly uh, throughout the session we'll be seeing embedded systems and uh, I'll be talking about from a perspective of an embedded engineer so before going into Internet of Things itself, so today I'm not going to discuss uh, widely about technical things. So we'll be just this is just going to be an introductory seminar into uh, seminar into Internet of Things. So I'll be talking about Internet of Things in general. So before going into Internet of Things, first we have to go through what is Internet and uh, how it, uh, the history of in Internet. So only through that we can come to the conclusion of uh, uh, why uh, you know come to understand why internet of things actually exist so we have to analyze from the early early days of uh, in internet itself so here uh, here in this slide you can see here uh, different in internet of both in internet of geeks internet of masses mobile internet and internet of things so these are like different we can say these are like different eras of in internet so these are like different stages that are distinct from each other uh, but also similar in so many ways they are more similar than distinct actually that's why in internet uh, the uh, internet the earlier internet and the internet today has so much things in common so we'll see all that so the era so these are like different eras of internet of things so when it comes to the first one is internet of boffins so it is the most earliest uh, it is the earliest form of internet so internet uh, actually was so if you take internet even today it is a collection of networks all around the world it is a collection of small networks interconnected and uh, through switches and then uh, so so you can any small network that is connected to a local network that is connected to internet can be accessed so if there is a server that can be accessed or you can access any any information any servers from anywhere in the world so <clears throat> it is a collection of small networks so same as that at the in at the inception it was also the same uh, initially internet was a small collection of small networks and it was called arpanet so arpa is the research wing of research and development wing of uh, defense department american defense department us different defense department so like in any uh, in any con any country like whatever country you take uh, like india itself the the one party that uh, spends most of the money on research and development in any country is the government government itself specifically the defense department not just for defense applications not just for military or defense application it can uh, it consists of so many different areas like medical you know so many different type of uh, military supported research uh, can be going on in uh, medical field or you know different type of uh, in chemistry or in uh, or in also in weapon developing or uh, satellite communication so so many uh, research is going on and different different so many different type of technologies like whether it is electronics based or uh, 
data science or whatever it is there will be the biggest investor is always the always the government always the is always the government so same as that in us it is the same so the research is mostly funded by most of the research is funded by uh, public research is funded by the government the defense department it, itself so that uh, the arpa is the research wing of this defense department so if you know about the uh, you know big <coughs> institutes like big universities in uh, in 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 america these are they are called ivy league schools so, that, so these are like big, big prestigious schools uh, universities uh, these are world class uh, universities where uh, where there are like research centers are there and these research centers are doing actual research on futuristic uh, things so science and technology so these are uh, these are under so these are funded by most of these research is funded by arpa was funded by arpa and so arpa has the uh, the intention of making it more efficient making the process more faster for for in inventing new things so they uh, so the internet arpa net or the old internet internet of bofins was originally created with that idea for interconnecting all these ivy league schools like uh, harvard or stanford or caltech or mit these are like different uh, institutes where there are like so many different type, uh, levels of research researches are going on so this if you connect all these researches for resource sharing if you connect all these different institutes the whole process will become more efficient because uh, because in one place 10 people are working on 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 one thing and uh, there is a uh, in like far away like 2000 or 3000 or 5000 kilometers away another institute uh, another set of people another set of people are working on the s- same thing or similar thing or an extension of the original thing original you know research subject so if both the people both the team have the ability to communicate in real time and share their resources whatever resources they have uh, uh, they have found or <clears throat> whatever problems they have encountered or like uh, different type of procedures they have to follow if they are able to share these resources in real time then the research will become more and more efficient if it is uh, any other type of correspondence the the kind of data that we can send and the time uh, delay of uh, of this it will take so much time but in internet means it is all interconnected all these institutes are interconnected so they can communicate in real time whatever happening they can or uh, they can automate it and whatever happening they can um, <clears throat> you know feed this to the feed it to the computers automatically it will be updated in the on the other side if they are authorized to access that then they can uh, they can access it so internet at that time was an exclusive network it wasn't like uh, it wasn't like the internet today so it was an exclusive network only certain people can access it certain institutes and certain people can access it so it was very closed uh, so that's why it's called internet of bofins so if you search the term bofins bofins is like it is like a slang word uh, it's uh, it's a slang word it is used in it is used to describe uh, people who are academics researchers uh, scientists who are more like more in general we can say like academics so those people are uh, we can say we can call those people as bofins so that's how the term internet of bofin came up like uh, because this network was only accessible to this limited number of people only these researchers so, so they for sharing their result and resources they used to uh, they utilize the internet because it is a defense department project it is very exclusive and it is very um, secure so no people can no common people can access uh, access the network get the information only the certain registered certain uh, authorized people can was able to access internet so that was the original idea original purpose of objective of internet was to share this uh, sensitive information different type of research resources was shared through this uh, this network so that that's how internet uh the the idea of interconnecting uh, small smaller networks to make a bigger network came to existence so in like same as today's uh, network today's network internet is built on tcp ip so it was the same 
it used the same TCP IP suite. Uh, the ARPANET used the same type of TCP IP, IP suite, uh, but it didn't have the kind of uh, application uh, that we have right now. It is uh, very wide today. It uh, There are like so many different protocols are there. Uh, so we can uh, do so many different operations. At that time, it was very much limited because it was only meant for this one purpose. And then, uh, so in 69 to 95, we can call it the uh, Internet of Boffin. So Internet already existed. The idea, the original form already existed in, in 70s, in late 90s, uh, late 60s and early 70s, 70s it, itself. So then, uh, then 95, even in early 90s, uh, the, it was made uh, more public. In, so at that time, even in early 90s, most people like uh, 90, more than 90 plus, you know, 90 percent of the people are not interested in this network because they, there is nothing useful about that. So they, even uh, like in, in the early 90s, they given access to early 90s they given access to uh, different uh, uh, like different other academics were able to access it not just these uh, lim uh, you know limited number of people other ac academics were able to access it by registering by paying some amount they can they, they were able to access the network so that was made a little bit public after that after uh, the early after the 90s but uh, in 1995 it made it was made completely public so that era is called internet of geeks 1995 so if you uh, check the history of big companies like uh, amazon amazon already was established in 96 96 or 95 i'm not exactly sure i think it is 96 it was established so internet was made public in 1995 so any kind of uh, small networks can connect if they follow the tcp ip they can connect uh, and they can uh, communicate. They can be part of the in, in they can access the data. Uh, but still, there is a one problem because it is a it is still in 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 its infancy because the in, internet as we know the public internet as we know uh, the internet as we know is in, in, in is still in in its infancy because uh, in 69 to 95 the network existed but it was only used for very limited number of things so internet as we know today it is used in all the areas like the applications are limitless we are using it in every different areas of our life mm, whether it is different science or education or uh, mm, you know job sector or government or whatever it is it is used in so many different er areas of our life so that was a limitation because the num number of things that can be that we, that we can do it using internet was very limited. So because of that, internet wasn't that popular. It still, uh, it, even though it was public, still it wasn't that popular. Most people didn't find it very useful, and it was a very limited thing because it's. Uh, so that's why it, it was still it at uh, at its infancy. Uh, infancy at as we know today internet as we know today so that's why it's called internet of geeks so geeks is a term of uh, term that we can use to call um, that we can use to call a uh, you know a enthusiast a person who is uh, enthusiastic about uh, science or technology so the, that able, that people they even if there is no like practical use they have with the internet even if the even if it doesn't make in their life uh, you know life any more any more convenient still they use the uh, use the internet because that amuses them it is an amusement amusing thing because uh, it is a new technology and uh, uh, so they are interested in it only only that's why the reason they accessing it they accessing it for different type of uh, purposes so at that time still in internet wasn't popular it was made public but still most people weren't able to use it in any useful way so that's why it's called that five years era is called a internet of geeks era so only like certain people who are interested in internet would connect to internet no so most people even today most people who use internet or connect to internet they don't care really about technology or science or any of that they want to use it for certain uh, purpose they want to use it they don't want to know the in interworking or uh, what is happening behind the behind the curtain they don't want any they want, don't want to know 
no i have anything up there not interested they have other in interest and but they can use the internet for to make their life more convenient so at that time that wasn't the case but uh, but still there were companies like amazon so uh, amazon originally started as a uh, book delivery uh, a book delivery uh, application so it was a it was a replacement to uh, physical book stores so you have to to get a book it was very, so that one application itself is very convenient because to get a if you want to read a book uh, either you have to go to a library and uh, lend it or you have to uh, or you have to go to a uh, go to a bookstore and buy the book so that means it you have to make time to you have to find time in whatever you know schedule you have you have to find time to do that but with the by making it online people can sit at their after work they can go home and they if they have internet access they can go to the website amazon website and they can order the book whatever so they don't have to walk around the store or they don't have to ask any people they can easily uh, find whatever book they need from the index itself so yeah, like <clears throat> it's a very convenient way of uh, shopping so that it is one so that uh, so that type of examples made internet more popular that that it 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 became that there was a uh, boost there was a boom in uh, late 90s and early 2000s so we can say it's it boom we call it it boom the it boom that is happened that uh, we we are also aware of that so the com- uh, the city like bangalore in india that uh, became very popular became a very high highly industrial city because of it boom so the company like uh, uh, wipro came to existence like one of the biggest mncs in the world right now and it is uh, it came into uh, play with the era of uh, that internet of it boom era so so many people uh, were interested and so many com- companies started investing and uh, so many different type of uh, like companies all already who were in different industries they started investing in internet they uh, because they saw the possibilities and also so many original internet companies have uh, started already have uh, already had uh, had started in 2000 itself so that mean that meant more things are there to do with using internet so internet became more useful so this era of internet is called internet of masses that means in internet of geeks it is public but pil- still people uh, the most people connected to it are not really utilizing it for any uh, is to make their life any convenient it is just uh, uh, interest but with the internet of masses more uh, business in, in started investing in it and uh, the market value of all these internet companies started going up so all these because of all these reasons more and more uh, applications uh, were created more and more applications that people can use to uh, make make it make things more easy so that's uh, so that made internet more popular so even like a uh, job applications or a uh, government level application so many things started uh, in uh, started to emerge in, in internet itself you don't you can it is very com- convenient uh, to use the internet in that way so that people became more aware of that so that's why it's uh, it's called the era of internet of masses more people started using it more type of applications uh, were built and more websites more applications were built using internet and more businesses start uh, started using purely so many businesses started purely based on internet itself so that uh, so that's why it's called the internet of masses still the uh, internet uh, still the connect number of devices so here if one thing you have you can trace from the early era to internet of geeks through uh, internet of masses is the number of devices connected the number of machines how many machines are connected here so in 69 to 95 in internet of boffins the number of devices is very very limited because only these uh, certain colleges and also computing equipments are very 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 expensive at that time pc was in uh, like in 60s or 70s pc was in uh, pc didn't exist mostly like main frames you have to use main frames and things like that so uh, so the computers very very expensive so the number of devices connected was very limited only business people or uh, in this type of only businesses like purely business uh, based uh, businesses would u- use computer 
so here in 95 uh, the computers are expensive but they are more, more accessible to public so you don't have to be a academic or a business person or you don't have to work at an airport or something to access the computer you can uh, you, you know use a computer you, you can <coughs> you can easily buy one pc and you can use whatever like the things that you can do with that uh, type of systems are limited but still from the from the perspective of a person from that time it is very high uh, high in technology so the pc is still the pcs are still there but people people uh, use it for different purposes but still the popularity of internet is not that high so that because that is because the number of uh, uh, like different type of applications that we can use in internet was uh, very limited and also uh, the internet speed was very low so it is not very useful for most people so most most major, so the number of devices exploded actually from 95 to this era it exploded it uh, increased very high but still the increase wasn't that much come because of the because of these limitations and then 2000 to 2007 the technology improved more and uh, personal computers improved more but still people are not uh, like mm, if you are if you are financially uh, well off then definitely you can get an internet connection you can get a uh, you can get your own internet connection at your home but more, to most people it wasn't possible because it was very expensive at that at that time and also if you get a uh, less expensive internet connection then like dial up or something like that then the speed will be very very low so it will be you uh, you will be you'll be using a very slow internet and it won't be that much useful so uh, so that at the so the solution to this problem was the problem was in internet cafes so internet cafes was established in the during that time the internet of masses time after the ip it boom and all that so internet of internet cafes uh, actually came to existence because uh, internet cafes means they'll have like multiple systems there 10 or 20 systems there and they'll have uh, one or two internet connections and these internet, internet connections will be high speed internet connections uh, so people don't have to pay monthly like a very expensive internet connection fees bec uh, because they don't have to use the internet all the time they just have they just need it for certain applications certain purposes so they can go to a internet cafe and they can easily do whatever they want to do there and they can pay for on an hourly basis they can pay pay so the in in internet cafes were popular at that time because the uh, computers were were like were expensive but still it wasn't that expensive compared to the earlier days it wasn't that expensive people could get pcs but still the internet connections were expensive so most people were able to use it at home so that's where that's the that's why the whole uh, internet cafe uh, idea came came to existence so then so that in that case also the number of devices exploded again so many number uh, devices got connected because people are using it for uh, like daily day to day uh, things they are using uh, the internet so the number of devices again increased here then with the mobile internet you can see mobiles are much more less expensive than uh, a computer a pc uh, and also you don't need to take a, you don't need to get a separate internet connection if you're using mobile internet you can use the same sim card and same uh, your same network provider will act like the isp and they'll provide you uh, internet but you have to pay extra charges for that so in 2000 uh, and 2000 itself 2007 itself uh, the internet mobile internet was already established but it wasn't like exactly the same as these days it was very slow and the applications were limited because uh, we cannot use desktop applications and uh, mobile applications are different so they all most of the so these days whatever we can use in desktop internet applications whatever in internet applications that we can use in desktop we can use also in our android phone phone or apple phone or any other type of phone so the, uh, but in back in the day it was not possible it was uh, it, like there are like limited applications that we can do uh, like you can browse Google and uh, email, check your email. So these are these type of things. So still, uh, the device is connected to internet, 
and the device is less expensive and the internet connection is less expensive so that means the number of devices exploded again uh, very very high because mo most people were able to access the internet without going to any place they can access the in internet at their home itself then beyond uh, 2011 2012 and beyond internet of things era of internet of things so era of internet of things means it is so in a, another chart in a, another slide i'll show you the number of devices connected so in that when you see the number of devices connected you will get the idea why the why uh, the uh, why internet of things why internet of things as a uh, as a technology as it evolved uh, this way because of the because of the number of devices connected so more number of devices are connected so possibly all these devices cannot be controlled by human humans by people so that means these devices should be automated so that uh, even uh, even if you take 2012 or uh, 2013 these are like the era of uh, uh, like these days data science and uh, machine learning AI deep learning all these things are very popular and we are still in that uh, period where we are going through uh, like it is the it is the new thing and it is the next thing still we are going through it into 2012 and 2013 in that at that age at that time it was a new thing a totally new thing and it was emerging so and it was made more popular like things like deep learning already started like uh, so many open source uh, you know uh, support was there communities were there so that because of that because of that you know recent devices we could make devices so that means automation became more uh, more liberal so it is not you don't need to be you don't need to be you don't need to make a big company or a big research labs to make automated uh, you know automated devices you can sit at your home and you can research on these you can use uh, uh, like python or uh, Python language or any other kind of language and you can make your own programs and you can make your own simple hardware setup and you can make your own automated systems so automation became more popular more liberal so that means more things are able to do uh, do execute tasks without human intervention so that means these things can be connected to these devices can be connected to internet and it they can use internet without any human control so why internet uh, so obvious for all these obvious reasons anytime anywhere any person business devices networks then internet and its uh, features so certain features of internet no one owns it there is no formal organization management or organization for in internet it is not a it was originally developed by the Department of Defense, U.S. Department of Defense. This so this lack of centralization made it less vulnerable to war time or terrorist attacks. So it is not a centralized system. So there is no, uh, uh, you know, no one can attack us, attack a particular point in the world and uh, you know bring down whole internet. That is not possible. So it is because it is decentralized. It is a uh, decentralized. It is a collection of small networks and. Uh, so the servers are in different different parts of the world so you know maybe one application can go down because of an attack but still all the whole internet cannot be attacked at the same time because it is a decentralized system so then to access the internet and existing network need to pay a small registration fees and agree to certain standard based on tcp ip transmission control uh, protocol internet protocol so like uh, all of internet is fully based on this the underlying uh, protocol is TCP and IP based on all this. So the then with the history of the Internet of Things itself, uh, it is the term Internet of Things was first uh, used by Kevin Ashton. It was first coined by the person Kevin Ashton in 1999. So what is Internet of Things? So we'll we can see here a small definition. Uh, basic level definition of what is Internet of Things. So I've already at the starting I've already explained that Internet of Things is just uh, any device. So it can be seen, uh, it can be Im implemented in so many different ways. So it is basically it means any device, any object, anything that is connected to Internet and it uses the network for some purpose it uses for, uh, you know, uses the network and the device is able to use the network without any human help fully automated if the device is fully automated then it is it is part of internet of things 
so that is a basic idea here so you can read the definition here we can re read the definition here. in the, it says the same thing internet of things is a is a network of physical objects devices vehicles buildings and other items so it can be uh, any of these so objects uh, physical objects so physical objects could be any of these things devices vehicles building so it could be any of these things and embedded with the electronics so the if you take vehicles or buildings they're not uh, they're not able to they won't they can't be able to uh, access the internet because if you take a vehicle it is a it is a mechanical machine so it doesn't have the capability to access the internet so you need to embed embed that with that uh, vehicle that machine with the electronic electronic device so the electronic device should be programmed using a software and then it can be it can then it in turn can access a network then using that network it can exchange data so like uh, you can take uh, in, uh, in the vehicle sense you can take examples like uh, for example like different type of safety system these days uh, like if you take a uh, high-end cars they are they are like connected to network a network and uh, there is a the the car vendor maintains a system where it is connected to this network so this is a network means anything if, if anything happens they can remotely control the car car actually so that is a there is so many if there is any kind of uh, uh, security issues then there will be some problems some disadvantages to this but it is useful in so many different cases like if you lock yourself out of the car and you want to get uh, yeah, you know you don't have the key keys inside then you can if it is a high end car high end car you can uh, you know you can contact the uh, the manufacturers and they can access it and they can unlock the car actually so that like if you take an example like uh, tesla is one of the uh, in terms of technology is one of the uh, best cars these days so they are like advancing in their advancement in uh, like uh, self driving cars everything is very uh, it's so much they have gone so much farther than uh, most other uh, manufacturers so if we take tesla cars they have uh, they are connected to their network and uh, these cars are like uh, our pcs so if you install windows in your pc then you know windows based on your, or, or your android phone based on any new update autom if you give con uh, consent that uh, update it automatically then the system will update system whenever there is a network update it will check for network ad updates and whenever there is an update the system will update it automatically update it once it is updated uh, the it will be it, your the whole system based on your hardware if it is a new uh, you know you, uh, if it is a new system then it will work faster than before it will work better better than before if the updates are good uh, not buggy then it will work better than before so that is the original that is the idea of like any type of update so the tesla cars work the same way they they connected so they without the uh, drivers concerned they'll automatically up, uh, upgrade the systems update the upgrade the system so with the up upgrades uh, actually it is not just a software up, uh, upgrade with the upgrade actually the the car itself can improve its performance the car can car can move faster than before with the up upgrade so that type of uh, things already exist so that is purely the we can uh, we can club that as a internet of thing applications because the car it doesn't have a it doesn't need any human it can automatically connect to the network and it can download the updates and based on the update it can install the update and based on the update the car will improve the performance of the car will improve so that is the whole that the whole thing is done without uh, the user the, the 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 owner knowing anything about it so that's why we can we can uh, classify that one example as a internet of thing application so in that place also there are like so many complex electronics is already embedded in that uh, in, in in the car itself and uh, so any cars any vehicles even the even basic you know motorcycles two wheelers that we uh, buy these days uh, they you know even the most basic uh, you know motorcycles have different type of sensors like for example stand if the side side stand is uh, down or up we can uh, so it will be uh, so it will give that indication 
even if you buy the most like basic uh, bikes these days that type of uh, features are inbuilt already inbuilt so this use this is done through different type of sensors so sensors then it is connected to so it with the internet of things or these devices are connected to different networks uh, that enables these objects to collect and exchange data so whatever whatever application that we use and do in uh, in internet is basically it is just collection and exchange of data so then a single sentence uh, anywhere world uh, then mission to mission communication this is a very important mission to mission communication so like mission to mission communication automated systems can communicate with each other without any human intervention then when it comes to different type of applications so everywhere uh, so on your campus so this is like uh, one example one example uh, so on your school campus smart internet of things school so we can uh, like internet itself internet of things the possibilities of in internet things are limitless there is no limit there is no we can't say you can't say that uh, these are the only things that this this many things we can do like this many things using in internet of things that is not the case we can, these are limitless we can every day we can think of something new that we can do with the internet of things so this is a small uh, single instance of that uh, you know single application that in internet of things in school campus in a school campus so we can implement that in a school campus or a college campus or an industrial campus or it could be an it park uh, or any type of area uh, so we can implement internet of things there so in this case specifically it is a school campus in school campus what are the things that we can do using internet of things so we can start from here like different things like personalized learning and with the adaptive e-textbooks, e digital classrooms, whiteboards and uh, displays, eye beacons for tracking, video records for uh, lecture capture, international collaborations and social exchange programs. So collaboration and social exchange programs. So normally social exchange programs happen like uh, students will go to other countries and they'll uh, spend time there, one year or two year there. So this type of social exchange programs already exist. In universities whether it is in universities or school level it already exists but you can make it more convenient more people can access uh, different cultures and uh, educational system there more students can access through internet they don't have to be actually they don't have to be there they can uh, online go online and uh, they can attend classes from a totally different country they teach using a totally different system uh, so the uh, student from here from India can easily uh, attend that class. So that type of uh, international collaboration and social exchange programs, then online testing. So you can attend the exam. If there is an exam, you can attend the exam uh, used through online and student devices and e-textbooks, notebooks, uh, tablets, and smartphones. Then sensors and trash, sensors on trash receptacles. Uh, so to, like waste collection and management system then robot cleaning cleaning system robotic stem and uh, robot presence then different file and program storage local cloud so different type of uh, things like demographic lms cms uh, video files lectures and recorded lab experiments then network applications analytics to monitor devices and network behavior then surveillance and security cameras surveillance and security cameras can be so automated we can make it make the whole thing surveillance and security could be make it whole the whole thing automated wi-fi uh, and log enhancement and access class uh, classroom doors augmented and virtual reality implementations and uh, complete coverage with high performance wi-fi then wearable for athletics and attendance tracking so the attendance can be made more uh, attendance can be made totally auto uh, you know, totally automated mm, so, so the advantage is that there is no uh, no way to do uh, like no uh, you know do any other like uh, any else because we have uh, if only the person is uh, present there then the uh, then the attendance will be noted so use you can use like different type of wearable devices for this 
you can you can use uh, NFCs. So NFCs means near field communication. So NFCs are used in these days and used in so many different places. Uh, so you can find them in uh, like payment cards, like uh, credit cards, or you can you they're used in uh, fast tags. Fast tags are uh, fast tags are like uh, automated uh, you know tag uh, no, toll toll payment. Uh, application so that is already implemented in so many fro- foreign countries cars don't have to stop at the uh, toll gate as they pass through automatically from a distance it uh, the receiver at the toll booth will detect the nfc that is already uh, embedded with the car so that that M- nfc will have some information some identification information based on that info the uh, the they can determine the car the vehicle and the owner and then uh, ba- they we can pay the money we can make it prepaid or postpaid so based on that money will be reduced uh, you know reduced from the account and then the person can move without without stopping or slowing down they can easily uh, move forward that is a uh, totally automated and it's based on nfc so nfc is near field communication so we can use that same kind of uh, technology to make at- attendance a students doesn't have to go somewhere and swipe or put their face or finger uh, they can just walk into the class as they walk in the class the uh, attendance is you know registered if they walk out after the first period if they walk out the then it will be noted as the attendance uh, student not present there so the whole attendance system can be made fully uh, automated the supplies and inventory tracking and auto uh, reorder and uh, mark make a space with 3d printers and laser trimmers and internet of things based have edge facts uh m- monitor and display of air quality through the school sensors and sensor track buses and verify the students so they can use the same uh, nfc attendance system here also like this can be useful for like a uh, small students uh, like uh, students with the age of uh, you know 4 to 4 to Four to six or four to uh, seven. These students like uh, the the parents can make sure that uh, their child is in the bus, in the school bus, and they can easily, uh, you know, well they'll get uh, you know notified whenever the student enters a classroom or a bus, they'll get the notification. Whenever they leave the bus or leave the classroom, they'll get the notification. So the students can easily track the. Uh, so the parent can e- easily tra- track their children using this type of technologies. So then we comes to uh, the connected devices. Uh, so this is the chart I was talking about, current status and future prospect of Internet of Things. So this is a uh, here. This is a representation of population and number of devices connected to Internet. Population, the world population, number of devices, and this is a ratio from uh, with the popula- the con- connected devices by world population. Ratio of connected devices by world population so in 2003 uh, the number of devices connected is 500 million 500 million devices are connected and then the world population at that time was 6.3 so you can see the ratio here 0.08 so per person there is only 0.08 devices much less than one device is connected to per person world population 6.3 and uh, 6.3 6.3 billion and uh, number of connected devices is only 0.5 billion so that means uh, the ratio is very low so number of devices per person is 0.08 in 2003 and in seven and uh, in just seven years that the ratio increased to double you can see almost uh, 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 they not double the ratio increased to twice the number of people uh, so here you can see 1.8 is a ratio that means the population is 6.8 population increased only 0.5 billion that is 500 million and the number of devices increased this many like 12 12 billion number of devices increased to increased by 12 billion so the total number of devices is 12.5 billion and the ratio you can see it's 1.884 so, so per person almost two devices are connected to internet per person almost two devices are connected to internet and then 2010 to 2005 2015 in just five years the number of devices again increased to 7.2 billion and uh, the 
sorry number of world population increase to 7.2 billion and the number of devices is 25 billion so you can see the ratio here per person 3.47 devices are connected almost almost 3.5 devices three and a half devices are connected per person so even in 2015 or even today in 2022 still we, we know that there are like so many uh, places in the world there is no they don't have the uh, they don't have the same kind of internet accessibility and there are like so many people I mean so if you take if you take the population there is like a percentage of people still who don't have the ability that they don't have the privilege to access internet the way we do these days so like even if this many devices are connected still the whole of the population the whole of the world population is not still not accessing the in internet still not using the internet but still you can see the number of devices is in uh, 2015 itself the number of devices is 3.5 times more than uh, the number of people connected to the internet uh, sorry number of people on the planet in that whole population there is only a percentage of people who are using internet so here what this signifies in 2020 you can see in 2020 that this is 6.58 per person 6.58 devices are connected to internet even if people are using in 2020 in 2020 even if people are using even if people were using like every person every single person on the planet were using like five or six devices or five devices still it won't be enough to cover cover all this so if it is all used by people then this is not possible the 50 million the, the number 50 billion is not possible so the so most of the device most of these devices are of these uh, devices are automated devices they are connected to internet on their own and they can do operations on their own so that's so that's the reason why the whole internet of things ex, uh, exists today because of this uh, this expansion this explosion in number of devices connected so different hype cycles of different technologies and the internet of things comes here and this is like a layered representation of <coughs> layered uh, representation of internet of things so seven layers of internet of things uh, the business value big data cloud fog so if you take the first uh, first block two layers are there layer seven people and process transformational decision making based on things and apps and apps and data so people and process means any uh, end user and any kind of end end application uh, end user application so that is people and process so anything like whatever we make in uh, technology like uh, it is always uh, for humans so the end user is always a human being so same as that internet in, internet of things also same thing the first the topmost layer is people and process then the, uh, the second one is the sixth layer is applications the outside applications the custom built applications using thing data then a data analysis then data analysis so then data analysis uh, so data analysis means uh, different type of methods we can use uh, reporting mining machine learning so machine learning uh, is one example machine learning data science all these comes under data analysis so um, machine learning can be effectively used uh, with the internet of things so it is being used and so we can uh, like for example we can collect data uh, from a, a if you have a uh, device a, it could be an embedded device or any kind of device with the sensors and we are collecting the data for example in ke, in an example we can say like we want to monitor a particular area like an industrial area an industrial area with uh, so many different factories so many different plants and uh, so the air pollution is a concern there so there are like so many industrial cities are there in india so if you take so many different states like tamil nadu itself or uh, uh, or uh, mm, Gujarat or Maharashtra 
so this type of state they have so many industries there and uh, there are like cities fully industrial cities they are the only reason people go there is to work in different factories or uh, uh, you know start different type of business based on this so the people who live there they live their whole life there they have a career and they have to live there they have to stay in the same city but the 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 uh, air quality in that place might not be apt for a human being so what we can do to analyze this either we can just wait for 10 years and we can collect the data and we can analyze what is happening and then uh, take like surveys and what is happening to people what are the different type of health conditions they having or one other thing we can do is we can collect the we can use sensors and we can collect the data and also we can use the previous year data uh, you know other type of uh, lab tested data and we can collect all these data and also we can have this real time data collection system where the sensors are reading different elements of the elements in air co2 or whatever different things whatever toxic gases that are available uh, that are present in the air so that uh, that can be measured through the sen- through different type of sensors gas sensors and then this data is given to gas sensor these sensor data can be read through a uh, a computer or a con- controller a microcontroller or a uh, computer computer system you can use a single board computer sbcs or you can use a basic microcontroller system and then the microcontroller itself is connected to a wifi module and the wifi module or any uh, ethernet adapter then it is connected to ethernet modem or then the ethernet through ethernet the it is connected to a network and the data is continuously being uploaded to the net, uh, uploaded to a uh, cloud so we can use any kind of cloud so if we take uh, clouds like aws uh, or uh, things speak these cloud services have inbuilt uh, we can we don't have to uh, download the data to analyze the data in the cloud itself we can write machine learning programs we can write machine learning programs we can run machine learning programs in the cl- cloud itself and we can make the whole process automated periodically the data will be connected collected and based the collected data can be used as a data set and uh, use as input data already we can train using previous data and then it, we can use the uh, upcoming real time data as input data and using this input data we can make predictions the machine learning program will give you predictions based on the design so you can make it for different type of uh, make it to give different type of outcome, outcomes uh, but we can make it for, to predict uh, if people breathe this uh, air for like a time period like one year or 10 year what type of uh, you know health issues can occur based on this so that can be predicted through in like programs like machine learning programs so this is like a one example in data analysis so the then data ingestion so data ingestion means big data harvest storage of data so like personalized apps all these comes under this type uh, data ingestion global infrastructure cloud infrastructure private hybrid different type of cloud uh, infrastructures like uh, aws google cloud mathworks different type of cloud services already available microsoft then connectivity and edge computing so different uh, that is that already exist in uh, internet itself uh, communication protocols uh, communications protocols networks mission to mission communication wifi telecom hardware kits all these comes under com- connectivity then things layer layer one is the most uh, basic layer the lowest uh, underlying layer is layer one devices sensors and controllers so like we saw in the uh, definition for any anything to connect to the in, in and it needs the app uh, the uh, it needs the equipment it needs devices so devices sensors controllers all these comes under this section then how we can communicate uh, sensors so like you can use uh, different type of sensors and uh, this is just a definition of a sensor a sensor is a device that measures a physical quantity and converts into a signal which can be read by an observer or by an instrument so any sensor if we take in general a sensor uses a mechanism to convert a physical parameter to an electrical signal so physical parameter can be anything it can be temperature humidity or uh, orientation uh, or current or uh, voltage can be any of these physical parameters then the sensor uses some mechanism so this mechanism is unique for each sensor 
or so or multiple sensors can use similar mechanisms because they are similar in working uh, but most of the sensors have their own unique mechanism to convert the physical parameter so if we take an example uh, a temperature sensor so one of the most basic a temperature sensor is called lm35 so this is lm35 if you check the image of lm35 in google you'll see it looks exactly like a transistor so if you take a transistor it is a three legged device and uh, it is a uh, bipolar junction uh, transistor bjt it's a three legged device base a collector emitter three uh, three terminals are there and uh, the shape everything looks the same because the lm35 uses the same uh, type of principle as a semi it, it is also a semiconductor it is made with semiconductors so semiconductor like silicon we know that uh, they are called semiconductors because they are not like other conductors conductors will always conduct electricity no matter what, no matter what are the uh, you know external you know external situation whatever it is it will conduct electricity but semiconductors it depends on uh, different parameters for well, one of the major thing is temperature so they become conductive at a particular temperature so they <coughs> based on the temp external temperature they can change their conductivity so the most of the silicon based uh, electronic devices are shielded from this because we don't need to use that there is a disadvantage when it comes to computers so that's why our computers have uh, so many different type of cooling systems uh, so the uh, <coughs> cooling system because the temperature need to be regulated uh, so then uh, so it, but with the lm35 it uses that very principle that very property of semiconductors to measure the temperature so with the temperature hike in temperature the, uh, the current flow through the sensor will increase and decrease based on that you can measure the change in temperature so that is one single example where they were it using this one mechanism the semiconductor property of semiconductor to convert temperature to a digital value it can first it will be converted to a analog signal then you can use an adc to convert that to a digital value so then different type of sensors uh, <coughs> water <coughs> water flow sensor ldr sensor current sensor and uh, sound sensor uh, so di digital and analog sensors so we can uh, we can go on uh, so this is mostly about uh, we'll be going into like controllers uh, so we need to me I just explaining these are not going to help you in any ways you can you need to start your own your own or you can uh, you can use internet you can use our platform panda learning itself to learn about internet of things more practical in more pra practical sense if you want to learn about internet of things if it like you don't need to uh, have like attend like a big course you just need to have like some ma basic no knowledge like platforms like arduino so it is not for any kind of career purpose uh, if you want to learn embedded systems you should learn other platforms but but if you if you're curious and you want to do different type of applications then you can use uh, you want to do like without learning so much you want to theory you can you want to Im implement different type of prototypes and your ideas you can use these type of boards you can use a arduino board different type of arduino boards and you can use a uh, raspberry pi boards or jetson boards so so uh, arduino boards are also used in the industrial cases not uno it's uh, exactly arduino uno exactly uh, you can learn it easily so this is just a so here uh, this was just a introductory session into in internet of things uh, from a purely embedded point of view uh, so you can <coughs> implement internet of things on your own uh, with, with it is very easy to learn uh, you can use platforms like arduino or uh, you can use a board like raspberry pi in python you can use python programming or you can use c programming so python when it comes to python it is very helpful uh, because it is very easy to learn and uh, there is a community that is so, so much dedicated to developing so new and new libraries and packages so that means the as we go forward things be become more and more easier for people to create so you can create your own applications very easily so this is just an in introductory session to in a of things so
Thank you everyone. Thank you for listening.